The Frame tool helps you enrich the visual stories told by your images. You can create frames, also called clipping masks, based on standard vector shapes, symmetrical and preset shapes, or vector text objects. Existing vector objects can be converted into frames as well. Once a frame is created, you can fill it with a photo, pattern, or colors to achieve the effect you want, whether playful, surrealistic, or avant-garde. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. In my first example, I have this template to which I want to add some images in frames. Note that I'm working in the edit space of the PaintShop Pro Complete workspace. To change workspaces, you can click the Home icon to open the welcome screen and choose Workspaces. The Frame tool is also available in the Essentials workspace, which, after I click Apply, looks like this. In this workspace, the Frame tool would need to be added to the Tools toolbar. Returning to the Complete workspace, the Layers palette should be open while working with frames. If yours isn't open, press F8. I first want to place an image in the large gray circle, but this is a raster object, not a vector. So I'll need to create a frame that matches the shape. My background layer is active, and I'll click the Frame tool. There are five options in the Tool Options palette, Rectangle, Ellipse, Preset Shape, Symmetric Shape, and Text. And when I choose Ellipse, I also have the option to create a circle. After clicking and dragging to create the circle, I'll move and resize the frame to fit the gray circle. This has added a layer group just above the background layer called Frame Group 1, which for now contains only the ellipse I just drew. To place an image inside this frame, I'll choose File, Embed Image, browse to find the image, and bring it in. The image is automatically adjusted to fit the frame while still maintaining its aspect ratio, and now also appears inside the frame group. While the image is selected, I can adjust its size or position. If the ellipse is selected, moving the ellipse moves the frame itself, so I'll undo. When the entire frame group is selected, the image and the ellipse move together, though not with the original gray circle, because that object is not part of the frame group. If I want to remove the image from this frame, I can right click on the framed image, or on the frame layer, or image layer, and click Extract Image. The image jumps out of the frame group to its own layer just above. If I know I won't be using this image, I can delete the layer entirely. Or I can toggle off the layer visibility if I want to keep it for now. I'll select the frame group again and use File Embed Image to try another image for the frame. This smaller gray circle is a vector object, so I can use it to create a new frame. All vector objects in PaintShop Pro are created as a group, with the object itself on a layer inside the group. So I'll open the Ellipse group and choose the Ellipse layer. Now I need to activate the tool used to create this object, which was the Ellipse tool, right-click anywhere, and choose Convert to Frame Object. To bring in the image for this frame, this time I'll open my file browser and drag the image directly into the frame. Note that the outlines around the frame will not print and will not appear if I save the image as JPEG, PNG, etc. But if I want to preserve this file with the frames intact so that they can be used for other photos, I need to preserve the layer structure, so I need to save the file in PSP format. In the next example, I already have one framed photo, and I want a heart shaped frame for a second photo. This heart is a raster object so I can't create a frame from it, but I can create a frame with a preset shape. I'll click the Frame tool, and this time click the Preset Shape option and choose the heart. I'll set a line width that works as a thick border, and in the Materials palette I'll click the red swatch to set the frame outline color. The heart is the currently active layer, and if I click the heart, I'll be moving it. So I'll click anywhere outside the heart, and drag the frame shape. After the first click, 
I'll keep the Shift key pressed to maintain the heart's aspect ratio. Now I can rotate, resize, and move the heart so that it approximately matches the original heart. I can now hide or delete the raster heart layer. From my file browser, I can drag the image directly into the frame in the workspace or into the frame on the Layers palette. For this beach collage, I have several raster layers for the seashells and three vector groups for the rounded rectangles I want to convert to frames. These were created with the Rectangle tool, which has options for horizontal and vertical corner radii. For each rectangle, I'll go through the same steps. Open the vector group and select the vector shape inside. Activate the vector tool used to create the object, which is the rectangle tool in this example. Then right-click anywhere and convert the selected vector object to a frame object. For the photos to add, I'll open the organizer, where I've already browsed to the folder with my beach images. From here, I can drag each photo directly into its frame. For one more frame, I'll activate the Frame tool and choose the Text option. Here is the font and size I'll be using, and I'll click and type and double-click to finish. The new text frame is just above the background layer, and I'll drag it to the top so that it appears above everything. Now I'll move the text frame, drag in this photo, and reposition the photo so that only water appears in the frame. Double-clicking the frame selects the entire group, which I can now rotate and place as a single object. I'll select the group of seashells under the new frame and shrink them to get them out of the way. To apply a 3D effect to the text frame, I first need to merge the frame group into a single layer, and now I can apply Effects, 3D Effects, Drop Shadow. In this example, I have a vector text above a background. Converting vector text into a frame is done as I showed for vector shapes. I'll open the text layer group and select the text, activate the text tool, right click, and choose Convert Text to Frame Object. I want the text frame to contain the same image as the background, so I'll choose File, Embed Image, and choose the same image. The wrong part of the image appears in the frame, so I'll choose Objects, Align, Top. To remove the background around the letters, I'll activate the Selection tool and draw a rectangle around the text. I can't remove the background from a background layer, so I'll right-click and promote the background layer so that it becomes a raster layer. Now, when I press Delete, the selected part of the raster layer is removed, leaving just what's inside the frame. The Frame tool is not just for layouts. It can also be used in endless creative ways. In this photo, I'm adding an elliptical frame to match the coffee in the cup and embedding and positioning this sailboat image. Now I can select the image layer and reduce its opacity so that the coffee swirls show through a bit. For this empty window, I'll add a rectangular frame. From the organizer, I'll drag a few potential scenes for my window right into the Layers palette, just above the background layer. To get the window back in view, I'll promote the background layer to a raster layer and move it just below the frame group. Now I can try out different window views by dragging each image layer in and out of the frame group. For these sunglasses, I'll add a circular frame to one lens, embed an image, and enlarge and reposition the image. After double-clicking to select the frame group, I'll use Ctrl-C and Ctrl-V to copy the frame and move it to the other lens. Double-clicking a frame group that's already selected toggles the selection so that now only the image is selected, and I'll line up the image to align with the first frame. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on the Frame Tool in PaintShop Pro. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.